Hi everyone, welcome to Bridget's Kitchen. My name is Bridget Davis. Very nice to have you joining me today for a cool little class. It is a brand new recipe. In fact, I only created this last night and the inspiration for this cake came from the fact that a very, very lovely dear friend of mine gave me a whole box of eggs straight from her farm. And I thought, I'm gonna have to do some really lovely stuff with these eggs. So I um, couldn't, couldn't just let them sit there. I had to start creating. So I have been creating so many different dishes with eggs. And this cake came out of the fact that Tracy Waters, thank you, my darling, for your beautiful eggs straight from the farm. And um, you know, Tracy is, is, even though she's come straight from the farm with her eggs, she joined us at a cooking book launch we had here in Sydney. She's gone back home towards Tamworth and um, our lovely Tracy um, is still watching those fires as well so um, we, we send you our love Tracy we thank you for your eggs we hope everything is well and hello to Thomas for joining me hello to Cara Lee for joining me as well good to see you guys really cool cake so um, it is a gluten sugar and dairy free orange and poppy seed cake and it, it when I made it for the first time yesterday I was so excited I was like I'm gonna make this tomorrow as part of a class because it was one of those recipes that was just too good to not make again so um it is brand new it is so brand new it is still in the book and it's, look it's scribble that, that's the recipe at the moment so if you're going oh bridge can I have the recipe sure <laughs> scribble scribble on my book hi Tracy just telling everyone that we are making um, a cake dedicated to your chickens your chookies and your eggs because of all those wonderful eggs you gave me so gluten dairy sugar free orange and poppy seed cake now as well as the inspiration coming from Tracy and her and her chicken farm and her, and her eggs the other um, inspiration I got from this book was actually for this cake was actually from the book too so um you know in the new book i have got a healthy treat section which is awesome and we have things like my um banoffee pie is in here which is my vegan banoffee pie that is in there which is amazing if you haven't tried that banoffee pie it is a winner i recommend you pull that one out during christmas or something like that you're gonna blow people away it is phenomenal um you've got my psyllium husk bread rolls which are also absolutely fabulous and really really easy to make turmeric and fennel crackers and the list goes on and on but the other thing that i've got in here all oh, these are amazing these are, i call these my aroha bars now aroha and maori because i'm maori from new zealand means love these are my love bars and um they're really good and easy to make as well and they're like your natural granola bars you know that you make yourself they're absolutely fabulous oh coral hi Kia ora Carl from joining us from um, Rarotonga, nice to have you joining us. And then on the following page, page 195, I actually have this cake, which is the orange and almond Cara cake, named after the lovely Cara Lee, who is watching this video right now. I made this for her birthday, I think it was last year, wasn't it Cara Lee, it was your birthday. And I just invented this cake and I said, look, I'm gonna have to name it after the, one of the most lovely ladies I've ever met in my life. And that is the Cara Lee cake right there. And now we have the Hawaiian Cara cake. So I've, it's gotten a new, uh, a new lease of life with the Hawaiian Cara cake. And now we're making the Tracy orange and poppy seed. Uh, cake and this cake is phenomenal if you like that combination of orange and poppy seeds because remember poppy seeds are a little bit savory so you've got that sweet and savory balance which is really nice um, but the cake is simple to make so let's get into it remember the the, the genesis from it comes from um, from more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen from the cookbook uh, but I have developed it further which is what I love to do with recipes is take a recipe and see how many wonderful ways we can create with it So we've got an orange and almond kara cake. We have a Hawaiian kara cake Which has got pineapple which is phenomenal and now we've got an orange and poppy seed cake as well So easy to do as I was saying so the first thing I'm gonna bring you guys down to the bench So you can see what's kind of happening down here I will be using today um, a kitchen mixer because it, it is there is a bit of um, you know whizzing involved I suppose but in my um, my little bowl here I already have four whole eggs so these are straight from Tracy's farm four whole eggs so I haven't separated them I'm gonna add just two more I just put them in there just to save a bit of time so in total this cake has six whole large eggs and it's gonna make us one really big beautiful cake by the way it's absolutely gorgeous so We've got our eggs in there. I'm going to put it onto my little machine and just bear with me because this is going to be a bit of a noisy class because we're going to have this machine going for about five minutes of um, beating. So I'm using a whisk attachment if I can get it attached at any point in time. Where are we? There we go. 
a whisk attachment because we want our eggs to start to whip up. And I've got it on a medium, a medium, I'm gonna try and speak close to the camera so you can hear me. I've got it on a medium speed right now. So while that is doing its job, I'm gonna get the rest of the ingredients um, ready because as I was saying, this, these eggs are gonna be whipping for about five minutes. And while it's whipping, what is happening is it's incorporating air. That's how we're gonna get the rise out of this because remember there's no gluten in this. So this, it's a gluten-free cake. So we want to get a nice rise out of this cake. We want it to look about that high by the end of it. And that is going to happen by this whipping that we're doing on our eggs right now. So while the eggs are whipping, I'll get, rid, um, get the rest of the ingredients ready. And one of the ingredients that I have, which makes it the orange portion. Now you could also do this with lemons. But if you're doing it with lemons, make sure they're really sweet lemons. Like they need to be good, juicy, ripe, but quite sweet lemons because it'll be quite a sour cake. So I am doing them with oranges today. And these oranges, I boiled for an hour, skin on, yep, whole oranges. All I did was take out that little point there, took that out because you can't eat that. And I have two whole oranges that have been boiled in water for an hour. I've let them cool down a little bit and I'm gonna blend them up right now. So I'll show you how that works. You come down here. Got my little food processor, got my little knife, and I'm, li I'm not even going to bother to take the skin off them because the skin's going to help to give it flavor as well. Now if you open your oranges and you find that you have seeds in them, just get rid of the seeds. My ones are lovely and seedless and they're really, really sweet. sweet. So the sweeter the oranges, the better. As we're coming right into orange season, this recipe is really going to take off because we're not adding any sugar. So because we're not adding any sugar, we want our oranges to be lovely and sweet. It's going to help to give us a lovely sweet cake. So that goes in. Just cut them roughly. Two nice big sweet juicy boiled for an hour oranges. They go in. Squish them down a little bit. It's going to get even noisier for a second. I need to process them. Bear with me. Woo -hoo. Here we go. So this little machine makes short work of it. Look at that, already. I'm just going to take it just a little step further. And that's how orange is done. That's the texture we're after with our oranges. Pretty easy, right? And hello to Tamara. How are you, my love? Good to see you. So that's how orange is done. Now that our oranges are done, I'm also going to have a little tidy. I'm going to get um, the dry ingredients ready as well. So the dry ingredients in this cake, very, very simple. Not much to it at all. The first bit of dry ingredients I'm going to get is the ones I'm actually going to incorporate into the egg, whipping eggs right now. So I'm getting myself a small little bowl. Anyone knows New Zealand pottery? That's Crown Lynn. Do you know that one? Wonderful, isn't it? All right, on to my... Scale. I'm going to weigh in the ingredients I'm about to put into there and the ingredients are simple the first ingredient I'm using is if you haven't seen this I know it's backwards but this is um, monk fruit sweetener so I have um, a company that I use in uh, WA it's called Sucrin and they have monk fruit sweetener and this is a um, monk fruit is so incredibly sweet it's about 200 times sweeter than sugar so not much is needed it comes from a fruit and it has zero calories so you can use monk fruit sweetener to replace um, sugar one for one so if you are looking at a recipe that you want to replace sugar you might want to check out monk fruit sweetener it has like I said zero calories so it's, it's, it's we're not going to do anything nasty to us it is also tooth friendly I'm reading the back gluten free diabetic friendly kosher and pet friendly just in case you make sweets for your pets it is pet safe i did not know that but there you go so i get this from um from these guys sucrin and they are based in wa and they deliver all over australia and we're going to be adding in 600 grams or measuring out 600 grams of this sorry 60 grams 600 gosh it's a lot of sugar 60 grams of sugar goes in there take that down just a little bit slower. I'm also going to add in a teaspoon of cream of tartar. 
Now the cream of tartar is there to help to give the eggs, um, to give them stability when they cook so that doesn't, our cake doesn't flatten. So now that those are in there, putting my mixer back onto medium speed, as you can see, I might just bring it up a little bit higher, there we go. Mixing those two uh, ingredients together, I'm just a teaspoon at a time going to add this into the whipping eggs. Now it's important that you add it while the eggs are whipping because that's going to help to dissolve the sugar so we don't have a granulated uh, sugar sensation in the cake. So just a little bit at a time, add it in. This helps to make, take the time pass as well. Already my eggs are looking nice and light and fluffy which is really really good. And this is exactly the same method if you were making pavlova. Obviously it wouldn't be whole eggs, it would just be egg whites. But you add in your sugar component, or your sweetener component, I should say, not sugar, slowly. And that just helps the sugar to dissolve through the mix as you're working it along. Yep, happy days. Yeah, Alright, let me have a look at what's happening. I'm going to show you guys what's going on in here. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty fluffy. Ooh, I better take that out as well. So this is what we sort of got at the moment. It could probably do with a little bit more. See it's quite thick, but it could probably do with just a touch more. Just wanted to show you guys what's happening in there. Or, or without getting it all over the bench. Alright, that goes in. Oh, got to put it down, put our whisk back in as well and we'll keep that going for a little bit longer and we'll get the rest of the ingredients ready once again simple, grab yourself up a bowl the rest of the ingredients, oh I'm going to put it straight onto the onto the scales here the rest of the ingredients are almond flour about 250, not about, exactly 250 grams of almond flour goes in 250, yep, that much. Baking powder. I'm going to be using a tablespoon of baking powder. So it does have quite a bit of baking powder in it, but trust me, you can't taste the baking powder once that goes into the cake. The poppy seed component, really important. Black poppy seeds I'm using. Three tablespoons of black poppy seeds go into the cake as well. That's going to give that wonderful savoury, savouriness to it. And the last dry ingredient is just a pinch of salt. Just a pinch of salt. It's going to help to bring up the flavour. And then we're just going to give it a bit of a mix, just to get everything mixed together. Make sure there's no lumps in your almond flour as well. You want that to be lump free if you can. Just stir that together, just like that. Yep, happy. That's all we need to do. The last thing we need to do, just before we finish up our cake, the very last thing, is we need to line our cake tin. So I'm going to show you a little trick on how to line your cake tin. A little trick for you guys. So I'm using, I think it's about a 20 centimeter cake tin, with a spring, a spring one, so it's easy for me to, um, to take this off or take the cake out when it's cooked. This is the only time you'll ever see me using a canola spray in my kitchen. The only reason I use it is I use it to act like glue. I just use it because it's easier to line your trays and stuff when you've got that to stick it like glue. Literally the only time I ever use it. People think, oh, they're like, you don't have to spray your tin because you're lining it with baking paper. The only reason I'm doing it is because this is my glue. Like, I'll show you what, how easy it is, once you've done that, to then stick on the round around the side. And I've made it quite large. It's actually going to go larger than the top of the tin. Look, it's stuck. You don't have to worry about it. How cool is that? So nice, large pieces. Go around the tin and you can add glue so you don't have to worry about it and make sure it is really well um, lined so there's no gaps because the cake will stick to this tin so that's how I use canola spray I use it like glue that is not going anywhere how cool is that right such an easy way to line your tin so so easy 
Okay, I can put that away now until the next time I have to line a tin. So now I've got it that way. My eggs are looking good. I'm going to show you now. I've got my dry ingredients. I've got my um, blended up oranges. We just need to combine everything. And I can finally uh, breathe a sigh of relief and turn that off. Now someone has asked, can I use inulin powder rather than monk fruit sweetener? Yes, you can. Absolutely use inulin powder, 60 grams of inulin powder instead of monk fruit sweetener. Um, monk fruit sweetener is definitely sweeter than inulin powder. So this is a really nice cake if you are feeding it to people and I'm not going to say you're tricking them, but maybe you just, you know, you want to feed them something really, really healthy and they have absolutely zero, zero idea that you're not using um, sugar, gluten or, or dairy. This is a really good cake with that monk fruit sweetener because it is a lot sweeter than inulin. But please feel free to use inulin because as you know, inulin is a prebiotic. So it's going to really help with health, gut health as well. So we're going to combine all those ingredients together because, as I was saying, this mixture now as you can see it's a lot more fluffier it's a little bit thicker it almost i'm trying to think of what it almost looks like marshmallow that's a good way to describe it it looks like marshmallow and because these eggs are so fresh from tracy they really really have um come out really really nice because they're lovely and fresh and when you've got fresh eggs you get lovely volume now one of the key with the eggs as well when you're doing this is make sure they're at room temperature because you'll get more volume out of um warm, not warm but room temperature eggs as opposed to having um cold eggs cold eggs are not good for this type of cake or for pavlova or for anything like that so it's looking perfect absolutely perfect I'm going to, as I said, combine these ingredients now. And you know what? I might actually put this into a glass bowl so you guys can see what's happening. I think that's a good idea. And I should have a glass bowl down here. I do. There's a glass bowl. Oh, getting hit in the butt by the, uh, by the drawer. There we go. Ooh, hips still work. All right. This is going to be better. Much, much, much better. Come down here. Okay, so dry ingredients in there. We are now going to add in our oranges. Really important. They go in. S smells good. It smells really sweet already, but citrusy. If you like citrus style cakes, oh my goodness, you just, you absolutely gonna, you're gonna love this. You're gonna love this so much. So give it a bit of a, I'm doing all this with it. This is how easy this cake is. I'm doing everything with a, with a tablespoon. I will eventually move on to a larger spoon just to make my life a little bit easier. Oh, it smells really good. Just like this, it smells really, really good. It smells amazing. All right. So give that a good blend. Make sure all the orange is mixed through the almond really, really well. And then I'm going to pick up a large spoon just to make this this particular transfer easier. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a couple of spoons because what I want to do here is I want to introduce the eggs to the mix. I need to do that really slowly and very gently. You see I'm doing using this folding action. I'm not beating the living daylights out of it because uh, that would mean that we're knocking all that air out of it that we worked into it with all that you know five minutes of it whipping. So you want to just very gently introduce, let them meet each other first time they've ever met. So you want to give them a bit of time to get to know each other. That's good. And then we're gonna we're gonna put in about a third of the eggs and once again just do it using that folding action and this is probably the only step that you need to be really mindful of because you don't want to knock all the air out of it because what's going to happen when your cake cooks is it'll go flat and that would be just horrendous <laughs> oh and someone likes my superwoman top yay <laughs> isn't it cool <laughs> Some days I do feel quite super woman-y and I'm actually feeling very super woman-y today because I have spent the last two days in the kitchen cooking and testing and making wonderful tomato, like I've got so much tomato sauce I have to go and buy more jars because I got given, once again by the lovely Tracy, gave me a big box of beautiful ripe tomatoes right from Tam Tamworth Way and um, I made a, uh, I had a, my pot's about this this big. Can you see about that big? You can't see. It's about that. There we go. It's about that big. My pot of tomato sauce. So I need to go and buy some more jars 
to put all that wonderful tomato sauce into. And I was so excited by these wonderful tomatoes, I also have made for us, it's currently in the oven roasting, I am testing a uh, roasted tomato soup recipe for us which I believe is going to be absolutely phenomenal as well. Of course, that soup's gonna be vegan, so I'm testing that out right now. It's, they're in the, tomatoes are in the oven roasting away, looking pretty fabulous, I have to say. And I've got um, garlic in there, so it's a roast tomato, roast garlic, and roast onion soup, which is gonna be pretty delicious, because the tomatoes are good. Tomatoes are very good at the moment. All right, so once that's all in there, and you've got a pretty good mix happening. You see, I did take my time. I had to tell you a few stories along the way. Keep you entertained while I folded it in. And you'll see now why I need such a large bit of paper coming above the um, rim of my cake tin. You could use a larger cake tin, and you won't obviously get quite as a high cake as what I get, but that's up to you. So then we just pour. Pour it in. There we go. And I'm going to reach for my spatula so we don't want to waste any of that lovely goodness that we've got in there. I'm reaching for, I'm just giving it a little bit of a, a little bit of a mix as well. That's a lot of eggs in there, Bridge. Jeez. This is going to be a huge cake, but that's fine. Huge is good. Lots of people to feed. Okay. Oh, lick my finger. Right. I want to show you guys without show, do you see how far, it's actually up, the cake's up here. The cake is up here. So now all I need to do is very quickly pop that in the oven and that goes into an oven set at 160 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And it sits in there for 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. So that's how you, that's as simple as that. Now, when it, once it goes in the oven, try not to open the oven door too often. Try and keep it in there. I'm just going to turn around and pop it in the oven right now and take out the tomatoes, because they should be roasted, and they are. Oh, oh, oh. All right. I just want to show you guys this. This is that tomato soup I was talking about. See, that's going to that's gonna be turned into soup. How good does that look? That looks fabulous. Doesn't that look amazing? I've got a question. Yes, Mahi? Tomorrow's asked, do you keep your almond flour in the fridge? Um, no, I don't keep my almond flour. The question was, do you keep your almond flour in the fridge? No, I don't keep my almond flour in the fridge. I just keep it in a, in a sealed, tight, airtight container. Um, but if you find that you don't use, like I will go through this, because I test a lot, and I would go through maybe a kilo of almond flour every week and a half, so it never goes rancid on me. If you buy a big bag of almond flour and you feel like um, it may last a while in your pantry, definitely pop it in the fridge, it'll last longer. But for me, this seems to work pretty good. Yes, my Next question, DJ has asked, can I use any powder rather than monk fruit for the soup? Ah, yes, we have talked about that. Can you use inulin powder instead of monk fruit? Yes, you absolutely can. But as I said, this will give you definitely a sweeter cake. So if you're feeling like you really want to treat your sweet tooth, this is going to be really nice. But inulin works just as well on this cake. So that's going to be roasted tomato soup coming your way pretty soon. But, of course, I prepared a cake earlier so you could see the results of what it's going to look like once it's done. Check this out. How good is this cake? Like, seriously, look at that. That is the orange and poppy seed gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free cake that I um, made yesterday. And it, look, it's so, oh, it's, I don't know if you can hear the moisture. Can you hear it? It's so moist. We're gonna cut into it for the first time. I'm a little bit nervous. I get a bit nervous at these sort of moments, but I reckon it's gonna be all right. So best way to cut a cake is always to cut it in half, yeah? Don't just cut a slice out. Your OCD, if you're like me and OCD, will just absolutely have, them have, a, have a little moment. I always cut my cake in half, and then I cut it in, the, I cut the half in half. This is you get even slices, by the way. Cut the half in half. Then you cut the quarter in half. And I think I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Cause that's a really nice big piece of cake. Check it out. How good does that look, right? Fantastic. It is wonderful and moist. It is gorgeous. It's held itself so incredibly well. 
And I have to tell you, I'm loving the color of the cake, and that is because Tracy's eggs are so incredibly wonderful. She's got very clever chickens on her farm, because you can see I've got this really lovely golden color from the cake, and um, it, it, it cooked perfectly. I'm amazingly, this, like this is from last night, right? Yeah, look how moist it is. That is gonna keep you going for a while, that cake. Now, how do you serve it? A couple ways you can serve it. You can sprinkle it with inulin powder, like you're doing icing powder. A little bit of inulin powder at the top will make it really, really nice. Of course, coconut yogurt is a wonderful way to serve it. But, you know, if you're feeling like, you know, you just need a little bit of a treat, you could even, you're serving it to guests, serve it with a bit of ice cream on the side. But for me personally, I like it plain and unadorned because it's got so much wonderful flavor and this is such a beautiful tea cake. Uh, Christmas parties, you know, anything like that, you pull this cake, you pull this cake out of the bag and you say, yep, I'm, I'm going to bring a cake and you bring this. Don't tell anyone that there's no sugar, no gluten and no dairy. They wouldn't even know. They would not know because look how fabulous that cake looks. It is wonderful. Very happy. I promise I will write this cake up. Um, I will actually put it into a document and release it on Bridget's Kitchen. Um, it probably won't be till next week because I've got to do that chocolate fudge cake that you guys all want. I'll be doing that one first. Um, and there's another recipe I want to do too and the week's nearly over. But I will be releasing this next week so keep an eye out for this next week. Um, which book? No, sorry. This is this, Someone's just asked which book does this come from? I only created this last night. It's not in a book. <laughs> oh, it is in a book. It's in this book. <laughs> it's a scribble. Like, look, you want this? Where is it? Uh, it's there. That, that's the recipe. It's in my book. <laughs> in my notebook. Um, but yet to be, I'll write it up for you guys and post it uh, on Bridget's Kitchen next week. But you know what? Just watch the video and you can also get the ingredients in the video too. I think I've got another question from Mahi. Julie Edmonds has asked, can you turn the cake into cupcakes? Can you turn the cake, cake into cupcakes? Absolutely, Julie. What a brilliant idea. You can turn this into cupcakes, but you just reduce the cooking time. So do exactly the same, same thing. Put them into cupcake liners because they will stick, remember? So even if it goes into a non Stick cup, non stick cupcake tin, put cupcake liners in them because it will stick to it. You know, make sure it's nice and high when you put them into the oven, like really, really stack up that cupcake and cook them for about 16 to 20 minutes. But keep an eye on them because you don't want to overcook them because overcooking them will obviously dry it out. So keep an eye on them. They would make amazing cupcakes. And then you could be really sneaky and do like a, a, a you know, a coconut yogurt twirl on top of it as well as a little frosting, which would be really, really nice. So that would be wonderful as cupcakes, but as a cake as well, these are it's pretty delicious and I can't wait for lunch time. It's happening really soon. I'm so excited. Don't forget guys, um, tomorrow is Q&A Friday. So we'll be doing a Q&A Fridays, me and you having a bit of a chat. Ask me any questions to do with food and recipes and weight loss and all that sort of wonderful, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, we are still running the competition for more. If you haven't currently got your copy of more, or if you have, make sure you take a photo of you with the book and um, put it onto Facebook, tag Bridget's Kitchen, um, tag more from Bridget as well. You can put it onto Instagram. And when you take a photo of you and your book, you go into the draw to win a foodies experience in Sydney with me, two nights staying in a luxury hotel. We will spend the day together. We will go shopping and I'll show you all my favorite healthy places to shop in Sydney. We'll buy some food. We will go through and have lunch at one of my favorite healthy restaurants. And then we'll come back into here, into my kitchen. And we'll do a one-on-one -on -one cooking class with all that wonderful produce that we have just bought. And after that cooking class, we'll sit down and we'll have dinner. So that's that is the competition. It's a two night excursion. Flights are included from any major Australian or New Zealand city. So it's open to Australian and New Zealand residents. If you want to be in to win, all you got to do is get your copy of the book, take a photo of yourself, post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag Bridget's Kitchen in it and you're in to win that cool prize. And I hope you enter soon because it's going to be exciting. I look, I'm looking forward to the foodie tour. I'm really looking forward to the foodie tour. It's going to be incredible. So thank you guys for joining me today. Don't forget, tomorrow is Q&A Fridays, which is really exciting. I'm going to go and eat some cake. Hope you have a wonderful day. For all of those people who are in, in, in 
the, the, the fire danger zones around New South Wales and Queensland and I hear, I hear even WA's got some fire too. We are all wishing you um, safety and hoping you are well and we're keeping an eye on you and please let us know how you're going as well because we want to hear to make sure that everyone who's watching is, is, is staying safe and um, staying out of harm's way. Alright guys, I'll see you tomorrow for Q&A Fridays. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.